These are definitely not the ideal conditions or good circumstances by any means. The weather outside is disgusting. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make S-Log3 go from this to this in Final Cut Pro without using any LUTs or plugins, just the built-in color grading tools. All right, so the first thing you need to do is make sure you've imported your S-Log3 or S-Log2 footage. Um, in my case, I've already done this in Final Cut Pro and I've already pasted it on my timeline. So I'm good to go. First thing we wanna start out with is open up the waveforms. So to do this up here under view, you're gonna hit show video scopes. This is what we're gonna use to make sure all of our highlights and lowlights are not clipping or underexposed. Now that the scopes are open, the next thing we need to do is open up the color board by clicking on the magic wand and selecting show color board. Now that all of these are open, we're gonna to switch to the exposure portion of the color board. And this is where we're gonna take a look at the waveform. So because we shot in S-Log2 or S-Log3, you'll see that all of the data is compressed to the very center of the waveform. So as long as you understand that the top of the waveform is the highlights and the bottom is the shadows, then we're able to start correcting the exposure for that clip. It's actually relatively easy. First thing you need to do is bring down the blacks. Um, you'll oftentimes hear it crush the blacks. So we're gonna go ahead and crush the blacks. We're gonna watch this and we're gonna watch this line. This is where it's the absolute zero for the blacks. Anything below that and it's losing all detail, anything above this and the highlights are too blown out. So let's go ahead and bring the darks down. You can see right there, right before um, that starts to compress anywhere further and you can see at the very bottom, everything is just completely gone. Bring it right below that, or right above that line. So now the darks are good. Now let's bring up the, the highlights. We're gonna bring that to right before the line, right there. Um, so now the big thing is gonna be dealing with the midtones. And with this, it's really gonna be personal preference and dependent on how you want the footage to look. If we move the midtones down a little bit here, you can see the tree will start to get a little bit darker. And I personally like the way that that looks. Um, you can see right here, it's almost, I feel like my daughter's hair is a little bit too dark, so I can now bring it back up, and you can see the hair lightens up. And you can see the whole waveform moving when you do this. So one of the things you can notice is when you do the waveform, if you bring the highlights up further, it'll actually bring the darks up, and same thing with the, high, with the uh, midtones. Um, so just watch what you're doing, and you may need to modify them multiple times throughout the editing process. So you can see the footage here already looks a whole lot better than what it did. Um, the next thing you need to do is look at the saturation. With S-Log2 and S-Log3, it desaturates the picture substantially. So, the first thing I normally do is just bring the whole saturation up until it's to a point that I like it. So, right here looks relatively good to me. Um, as I scrub through it, there's a lot more color in there. Now you can kind of look at the darks and the highlights and the midtones and everything else and distinguish where you want more saturation. So, for instance, I want more saturation in the grass right here. But not in this. This is going to be more of the darks and the shadows. This is going to be more of the midtones. So if I increase the uh, uh, saturation in the midtones, you can see the grass is getting more saturated. Now, this is where things get tricky. The clothing also is going to get more saturated. In whatever you want to call this dress, you can see it's getting more saturated as well. So you do need to watch out and watch the skin tones and make sure they don't get oversaturated. But with this, I personally don't think it looks that bad. Sure, there might be periods of it that have oversaturated, but in most cases you wouldn't use this whole clip. So you're going to kind of base it off of, I don't know, a 5-10 second period of this. Overall, I don't think this looks bad. And you can even go further than this and modify the highlights more, um, or the shadows more. The next thing you're going to need to modify is the colors themselves. Um, this is making sure the skin tones look good, making sure the color doesn't have an orange, red, blue hue, whatever it might be. In this case, it really doesn't have much wrong with the coloring. I was able to get the white balance correct this day, so I don't have to modify much when it comes to that. But if you want to do this, let's say the video footage has a bit of a yellow or blue hue to it. Depending on if it's in the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones, you can modify it here, or you can just change the color of the whole footage. So right now, it almost looks like it has too much green for me, so you'd bring the greens down just a hair, and it'll bring up the magenta a little bit more. Same thing if you want a warmer color or a warmer footage. You can bring it up slightly. 
or you can even break it down, make it more cool. And that's really all there is to it. 